and welcome at the Pursuit of Healthiness podcast. I'm your host, Winona van Delft. I'm a health and mindset coach, entrepreneur, spaghetti and ice cream lover, and a cat mom. I love conversations that are on a more raw and deeper level. So today's special guest is Angel Santiago. He is a transformational coach, speaker, trainer, and leadership facilitator. He is just incredible. I haven't met many other people that are like him. He has just this energy, this vibe, this... I just get really calm listening to him, but also happy at the same time. I hope you experience the same in this episode, as we are going to talk about mindset and life and happiness. So yeah, let's get to it. So hello, how are you today? I am doing awesome. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Of course. So tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do, because I, I know you do a lot of pieces like breathing and mindset. And... Mm-hmm. Well, I'm a, I consider myself a transformational coach. Uh, I'm very passionate about helping people look at their lives and look at those places where they can figure it out. They just don't see a way out. And sort of like like a hawk flying above the issue through my questioning, through my guidance, help that person find a way out. You know, in a way, help the person through perspective giving how to turn their personal conflicts into fuel for personal and even professional growth. You know? Okay, beautiful. So how do you do it? How do you start? Like, what, what kind of questions do you ask? Well, it depends, you know, for the most part, I feel like when I'm in a session with someone, I'm I'm really listening to three different, not voices, but three different perspective, the perspective of the person that I'm, that I'm with my perspective. And then I would say spirit or, or divine source, you know? So in that moment, I may, I may feel a question that I need to ask or point something out. And I won't know until I'm in session with that person. You yeah. know? It's okay, just yeah. kind of seeing what emerges in that moment, you know? Yeah, it's not one size fits all. It's really yeah, it's, personal. Right, right. Yeah, and I understand that. Like nobody is the same. Nobody goes through the same stuff. Mm-hmm. Or they go to similar, but it's always a little bit different. It's a little bit different. But there, but there is, I would say, if I were to narrow it down to one common thing with everybody, is is how is this situation that you're talking about, whatever the situation is, whatever the challenge is, how are you, how is that showing up in your own life? Because sometimes you could be talking about a client that has a client or, or a client struggling with a friend or a relationship or a client struggling with money or a client struggling, whatever that may be, Mm -hmm. whatever the situation is that they're bringing up, that they're observing, usually it's also happening in their own personal lives in another way. And so is how can we, how do we learn to, to gain and draw wisdom? How is that challenge helping us? So yeah. for the most part, that's like the commonality. It's like, how do we turn, how are our challenges and our conflicts helping us grow and become the person that we said we wanted to become? Yeah. So it's often what you say, like reflecting in, in multiple areas in your life. Like if something goes wrong in your business, the reason why it goes bad might be the same reason why your finances aren't correct. Aren't yeah. Okay. Correct. Yeah, that's good. Cool. <laughs> well, I have a couple of questions for you, and um, I know some of them are a little bit more deep. I mean, I hope you thought about it. I've sent them to you, so I hope you <laughs> prepared a little bit. So, I I want to know um, is what we perceive. Um, when we see the reality is that um, uh, just a construct of our mind or can our minds um, how do I say this correctly um, do do we all see the same reality or are our minds changing that reality so nobody sees the reality how it really is or what do you think about yeah, that? I would say it's it's very subjective to you. Um, take, take a family of four brothers, for example, four brothers and sisters. Grew up in the same household. 
same parents. They never got divorced. Same parents. They lived in the same house all their life, right? And there's four siblings. If you ask each of those four siblings to describe their experience growing up, you're going to get a different answer from all of them. From all of them. You're never going to get the same answer. Yeah. So it's definitely subjective. It's definitely subjective through the lens of what you, what you felt you didn't get. I mean, a lot of times, you know, as adults, we sort of stay stuck at the moment of our lives where we felt the least amount of love or even where we experience, and that correlates to, to a, mo- a very painful moment in your life, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's very subjective. We, we see, I mean, I like to joke with this, with this painting of this rhin- rhinoceros. Mm-hmm. There's this rhinoceros who's a painter and, and he, he or she, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but yeah. he's, he's painting a palm tree or he's painting the sunset, or he's painting the beach. Whatever he's painting, in every one of his paintings, there is a big horn on the painting. Yeah. Because he's, he's always going to see the horn, no yeah. matter what he's looking at. He's always going to see it. So it's the same for us. We're always going to see our situations through the lenses of, more than likely, our wounding, right? Yeah. So you take a breakup, for example. One one person sees it this way, the other person sees it that way. You know, it again, it's just it's your focus. You know, so I think it's it's very subjective. Yeah, yeah, our minds can trick us, can trick us, but we can also trick our minds. That's something that I've learned the last couple of years. And how would you say is the best way to trick your own mind? Well, to say trick tricking like that. Mm-hmm. What is the best way? Do you think? I kind of see to, that as to, to get the best it. out of your life. Yeah. Like that's like hacking into your mind, kind of like yeah. the same way you would hack into your com- a computer. We can do the same thing with our mind. And it's, it's also too like, for example, I was, I was working with a client and she had the story of failure and chaos in her mind about something that was coming up. It hadn't happened yet, but it's, it's, she was kind of like assuming or kind of like getting ahead of it, getting ahead of herself. And she was already going into, chaos and failure right and i asked her (laughs) right 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 and i asked her what what evidence do you have of that like how do you know that's even true and she says well i don't know i said okay have you ever been in this situation before yeah i have i I was in the situation and she gave the example and how did how did it go well i was i was just as uncomfortable as i am now back then and then i just did it and over time, I got comfortable with it, and now I'm not, un- I'm not uncomfortable with it. And it's like, so why would it be any different now? You just have to start over with a new situation, but you're going to be uncomfortable at first. You're going to do it, and you're going to get comfortable with it over time. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah. You just have to talk yourself through it. I always t- tell my clients, you have the voice of your highest self, and then you have the voice of your limited self. You have to constantly, that voice of your higher self has to constantly be talking to your limited self and kind of like showing him or her a different perspective. You have to be in communication with yourself and you may look a little crazy, but we're all a little crazy, you know? Yeah. (laughs) So it's just, you have to kind of like constantly question yourself and question the chaotic stories that you're creating in your head with rational things. Like, really? Do you really know that? Is that really true? You know? what's the worst thing that can really happen right. like sometimes we feel like we are going to die if we if we do something but right. what, what's the worst that can really happen right even with losing weight or starting your health journey often you feel like yeah but i have to give up all of that and then you're like but do you really like what what's the worst that can happen if you mm-hmm. say no to fast food or what's the worst that can happen when you say no to coca-cola or something like that you know right it's just it's a small example, but no, I, I yeah. agree with you. I mean, yeah, we really, we really don't know. We really don't know, and so uh, our our go to is to go into the to catastrophize our future and like go to the worst case scenario when you really don't know. Like we just have to be as present as possible with what is and what's going on, and then as you take those steps and you start heading in the direction of where you want to go, you, you do have to have a clear vision of where you're going for sure, because that way you'll have a sense of direction, but if not, then you'll be a little bit lost, you know? Yeah. 
yeah i felt that way before if you don't plan or if you don't set goals mm -hmm. even small goals we need them to know where we are going that's it yeah yeah and we have to keep talking with ourselves like you said yes. you have to it's a repetition every single day and i often mm -hmm. remind myself when i was in high school the teacher would always say that if you break up the stuff that you have to learn, then it's easy. If you learn just a little bit every single day, then you know everything in the end. And then I was like, oh, that's too much. I'm not going to do that. And he, keeps say he kept saying to me like, no, you have to repeat it. You have to repeat it. Repetition is the model of skill, mm -hmm. you know? And I was like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> but now I'm like, it is true. Like in almost every area of your life, yep. you have to repeat every single thing to to know things and to be comfortable with it with definitely i agree yeah yeah another one <laughs> do you believe that we have the right to be happy or that we have to earn it mm. i think it's i think it's a choice you know a lot of times we're looking we're looking at happiness we're looking to create it or we're looking to find it somewhere or we're looking to someone to bring it to us. And it's not anywhere outside of you. Like it's not anywhere or in anything or anyone outside of you. It's yeah. all within you right here. Your connection with yourself. Your, it starts with your thoughts. How are you? What is, what kind of mindset do you have? You know, it starts, I mean, that thought is going to dictate a feeling and that feeling is going to dictate an action. So again, it all starts with your own mind. You know, you can wake up in the morning and be upset that you're tired or something's hurting or that you didn't get a good night's sleep, or you could choose to be grateful or you can choose to take a deep breath in and, and look forward to what you got coming up. You know, I think again, for the most part, most people that wake up not happy and that, or, or just in a mood, they really don't have anything to live for. They don't, they're, yeah. they really don't have anything to look forward to. Like they're really not doing anything. And, and if they are doing something, they're not doing something they're passionate about. They're not doing something they love, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I think that has a lot to do with it, you know? So I honestly, I think it's something that, that is within you that you can definitely learn. You can learn to be happy. You, know? yeah. you really can learn to be happy, but it, it's a choice, you know? Yeah, definitely. Happiness is a choice. Yeah. Yeah. And the people who, do you have advice for people who believe they don't deserve to be happy? Well, a lot of a lot of that is because they were made to believe that. That's a belief that they have. That's not even theirs. Yeah. You know, like they some somewhere along the way, like usually, you know, the first seven years of your life are really really crucial, especially in the womb when when you're in the womb of your mom. You know, that's very crucial time, and a lot of parents don't know that. A lot of no. parents don't know that parenting starts in the belly. Not, not once the kid is out, then you start parenting. No, parenting starts in the belly. You know, that kid is inside you and that, that child is feeding off of you, not just nutritionally, but emotionally, you know, energetically. So your mental state, yeah. your relationship with your partner, you know, how positive or negative you are, if you're afraid, if you're constantly, if you're arguing with your partner all the time, like all of that stuff plays a part in how that child is going to be and who he, who or she is going to be, you know? Yeah. So if you have this belief that I don't deserve to be happy, somewhere along the line, someone made you to feel that way, you know? And yeah. it's not even your belief. And you get to question that. It doesn't have to be true. That's true. Yeah. We definitely have to question ourselves more. Like, why do I believe if I believe? And and how did it come that I believe that? For me, for example, I had really bad beliefs about money and that money was bad and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, no, it's not. That's right. Because I grew up in a household where money was evil and mm -hmm. there was a lot of debt going on and money was something that I had to fear because I, yeah, you need money to pay things you don't like. And mm -hmm. It's all about shifting your beliefs and shifting your mindset into making it into something that serves you in the Correct. life that you want. But for that to happen, you have to know who you want to be and where you're going, you know? Yeah. 
And, and you, you're right. I mean, that, that was my next thing that I was going to say, the whole money thing. I have people today that, I, that do have issues with money that I ask them, what is your definition of money? And they're like, ooh, that's a good question. I've, I've never thought about that. Like, I don't even, I don't, they don't even know how to put it into words. They have a belief, but it's not even theirs. Like, what do you, the adult that you are today, what do you believe money is? Yeah. And they don't know how to answer that question. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I, I think it all starts with the parents. I don't want to blame every single parent on earth because you do the best you can, but we all have to be conscious of what we say, mm -hmm. what we think, mm -hmm. because it projects to everybody around you. That's right. And that's why I'm, I strongly believe that you become who you surround yourself with. That, you're so, right. You're right. Yeah. Um, how do you think, do you believe in something higher, if I can say that, like the spiritual world? Because I believe it's a kind of an energy that flows around. And if you hang out with the people that are like-minded and are positive, then you will get that in return. I totally agree with you. Um, yeah. I think, I think, I mean, I, I grew up Catholic, you know, I grew up Catholic and then over time, I kind of left the Catholic Church and became more of a Christian, non-denominational. And then I had some really difficult experiences happen to me when I was 19 uh, in college where I was like, there's no way that God exists. Like, not in the way that it was taught to me, you know? Yeah. And so I became an atheist for a couple of years. And then I became, then I read this book called Conversations with God uh, by Neil Donald Walsh. And that book show me a different perspective of God, right? One that was more in alignment with what I was thinking at the time. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. So there is something. It's just not what I was taught, per yeah. se, you know? So then I became more of an agnostic person, you know? I, I knew there was something bigger than me, but that was also within me. It was all around me, you know? And it was in everything that exists, you know? Yeah, And so it just, it took a while for me to figure out what that was. And then in 2011, I had a very, another difficult time in my life. You know, what I call those moments, like moments of impact, like a very impactful moment in my life. And I started meditating and started reading about quantum mechanics. And I started looking at science and, you know, evolution, like different, different yeah. things, you know? And that's when I realized that, for example, science may say, talks about the big bang, right? And then religion talks about creation yeah well those two things are the exact same thing you know basically, like yeah. it's basically the exact same thing one one story is being told through the lens of religion and the other one's being told through the lens of science you know but they're talking about the same thing you know yeah. and so now i i do believe there is a a divine energy a, a source or something that's within everything that moves that exists that is and it animates us and it animates everything and it, and it can help you create amazing things in your life just like it can help you create horrible things in your life like like star wars the dark the dark side and the light side you know yeah it's the same force it's the exact same force just being channeled different with different intentions for different purposes but it's yeah. the exact same force yeah yeah I, I don't believe in a god like i don't but I do believe that it's a kind of an energy flowing around mm -hmm. that's everywhere and that that is making, well, it's not necessarily making things happen. No, it just is. But you know? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, do you believe that people, that humans are creators or, um, or are good at destruction? Both. Again, it's, yeah. it's, it's both, you know, again, going back to the example of Star Wars, you, you either, you either a Jedi or, or you're part of the dark side, you know, like you use that same energy to create amazing, beautiful things. It's like, you can use it to destruct. Yeah. You know? It's there. It's available for us. The question but it's is always a choice. It's always a choice. Right? How do you want to use it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Beautiful. I like it. Um, 
Um, I have two other questions. And the one of them is that if you would die today, do you have any regrets? Zero regrets. I, I feel like everything that happened in my life was, again, I, I feel that that was a choice I made. You know, I feel like I made that choice before I was even born. You know, there's some choices, like those moments of impact, no matter how much free will I have and how much I want to change directions, there's some things that I needed to go through yeah. because I needed, I needed to grow, you know? And I have zero regrets. Everything I've done has served a purpose, you know? And, and it has helped me become who I am today. I mean, for, in 2011, when I had that horrible experience, you know, one of my moments of impact, my, I, was, I found my purpose yeah. because of that experience, you know? So you can either become a, a victim of your circumstances or you can use your circumstances to fuel your growth and to, to help you become who you said you wanted to become. Because I feel, like, I feel like everything is supporting you. You know, a lot of times we want to look at light and dark as opposing forces and they may look that way but they're not they're actually on the same team they're helping you gain perspectives of who you are so that you can figure out oh this is why i'm here this is where i'm going okay this is okay i'm here like that okay i need to do this this way it's all helping you shape you and give you the direction that you need it's all supporting you so they're not they may look like they're opposite forces but they're helping you succeed. They're here to help you succeed. You know, I see that as like the, the pinball machine. Yeah. <laughs> you have the paddle boards. You yeah. Know? Yeah. The, the, the paddles are helping the ball go up and score the most points. Mm -hmm. But if I label one of those paddles bad and one of those paddles good, I'm not just going to play with the good paddle. No. I need to play you with need both. both of them. Yeah, you need both. Yeah. So it, it's, it's important. And, and, and I think people need to learn to appreciate the contrast in life and what's what am i learning here in the dark in my dark parts because with without it you don't get to really know who you are you know you can yeah. if i go towards the light all, all the time i can get lost but if i can go towards the towards the dark all the time i can get lost yeah those forces is helping us find out who we are in the middle you know yeah yeah i had an interview the other day as well and that woman she said that you can only learn from your challenges and i agree with her because the moment that i made the biggest changes in my life and i grew as a person were the moments that it was the most difficult time mm -hmm. and that's what you said that's when you learn who you are and which yeah. direction you need to go and so yeah they are definitely working together and you cannot appreciate the good when there is no bad i mean that's it's, right if that's it's right. always good at some point it gets boring. Yeah, I mean, think about a roller coaster. <laughs> I mean, the roller coasters have tons of up and downs, twists and turns. Imagine if you get on a roller coaster and you go up, 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 and it never goes down. Well, I will be happy with that. I'm afraid of all roller coasters. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be so not fun. But it would be know? boring. Yeah, it would be boring. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Not, nothing would happen to you, really. I mean, and you're right. You know, when things are good and things are coasting, and that's great. I think that's necessary. We want those moments. What we don't want is we don't want like big dips and big pikes. No, we want to try to give it as as constant as possible. You know, we, yeah. we want to get away from the big disparity and the in the lows and the highs. You know, we want to try to be more neutral, but we still want the ups and downs. They're they're necessary. You know. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We have to take maybe not at that time, but there's always a lesson in always in what we learn. What is your biggest biggest lesson you've learned so far? And they're all big, you know. Yeah. They have they have all been big for their moment and for their time, you know. Yeah. But I would say probably my biggest one. I'm 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 still learning right now. I'm integrating it right now, and it's uh, I I grew up without a father, so like. I was, I was more in tune with my feminine, you know, not so much with my masculine. And I also pushed my masculine away for, for a while because most of what you see in the world is a distorted expression of the masculine, you know, yeah. toxic masculinity. Toxic you know? masculinity yeah. And I didn't want anything to do with that, you know. But when I did that, when I pushed it away, I also pushed away some really, really good qualities that were necessary for me to have. 
Um, when I was three years old, my mom and my, my dad divorced. And right around three years old, psychologically speaking, I should be looking at my dad so he can show me how to be a man. Like I, I stopped looking at my mom. I detached from mom a little bit and I should be now looking at dad. And there was no dad there for me to look at. No. So all I had was mom, you know? So I didn't have, uh, and I had to interview men in my life that I look up to and ask them, what does it mean to be a man? And they gave me their perception. And, and I, so I took stock of all that and I just kind of learned. And then in my last relationship, she, she was very heavy in the masculine side. So she challenged that of me a lot. And I challenged her feminine, her femininity, which she wasn't quite in touch with, you know? Yeah. So she was mostly masculine and I was mostly feminine. So we challenged each other. And so that was very challenging for both of us. But it yeah, helped me so much. It helped my masculine side grow. And so I'm in a place now where I'm integrating. I'm learning to do that dance of the masculine and the feminine within me. Yeah. So that I can be a more integrated whole man today, you know. Yeah, that's beautiful. Because a lot of guys think that, oh, I have to be the man. I have to be masculine. And they push away the feminine side. Well, it doesn't mean right. that you're a girl if you let out your feminine side. Correct. There's a place for both. Yeah, definitely. You know, there's a place yeah. for both, you know. And they are switching I, up sometimes. But. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to a friend of mine and a colleague of mine, and, and he had to man down. I had to man up. Yeah. So it's kind of like what you're saying. He had to learn to embrace his, his feminine side, and I had to embrace my masculine side, you know. So it's, it's two different things, but at the same time, it's really the same thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and um, to wrap it up, um, why are you worth knowing? Why are you worth knowing? Why should people oh. know you? What, um, what do you bring back to the world? I would what say perspective. Per I think I say perspective. Uh, I have a way to draw wisdom from anything. Like there isn't, a, there isn't a single experience that you can throw at me that I cannot find the wisdom, how it's trying to help you, how, how this is actually trying to grow you. Like, you know, a lot of times we say that we can only connect the dots when we look backwards. Like, oh, when you look back at your life, you can see how everything connects. Yeah. Well, if everything connects looking backwards, then that means everything's already connected as I look forward. I can't see that. But the question is, can I trust that? And I try to teach people that. I try to teach people that this moment, this dot that they're in, it, it connects to the previous and it's going to connect you to the one that's coming. You just have to have faith in that. You know, I, I, I just have a way of the way I look at, at the world. I look, I look at the world that is, as is supporting me. You know, if, I, if I've prayed for something, if I've set an, inten an intention to become something or someone, then everything that's happening around me is actually helping me get there. Instead, oh, well, this is an obstacle. Well, this is an obstacle. Well, this is a challenge. Well, this is in my way. No, it's not. It's actually helping you, you know? So how? how? Let's find that out. And so, like, that's one thing that I, I, I just, I draw wisdom from everything, and I share that with the world. I share my experiences. I feel like our lessons are not just ours. I mean, ever, someone else is out there going through the same thing that you went through, and, and if you open up to share it, they, you may help one person or two, you know? Yeah. paying it forward so so i think Beautiful. that it's just perspective and how to draw wisdom from everything in, in life yeah that's beautiful i get an amazing vibe from you you make me calm you make me happy at the same time and uh, thank you it's just really great talking to you <laughs> I it's appreciate just the that. energy the vibration that you put out into the world it's 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 unique i haven't met many people that have the same oh wow thank you yeah i think it's really beautiful and it's funny you say that because i don't know if you can see this or not but like this says yeah. energy yeah so this is the co energy coaching yeah this is the coin from our conference coming up this weekend yeah. uh, and our theme is energy so we're going to be talking about energy all weekend this weekend so okay well i wish i could be there <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 definitely um so how can people find you because you are coaching people right Mm -hmm. So I would say in any social media platform, like particularly Instagram, if you go on Instagram uh, or even Facebook or even YouTube, if you just put in the hashtag 
life coach angel you're gonna find me That's so cool. any social media instagram facebook even youtube put the hashtag life coach angel and you'll, and you'll, and find, you'll me. find it okay great well thank you very much for today i really enjoyed oh, it, was a it pleasure yeah thank you yes okay well have a great day and you yeah too. talk to you soon bye-bye bye Angel is also going to be a speaker on this incredible event happening on the 12th of December of this year. It's called Become a Superhuman and Angel, myself and three other coaches will be teaching you all about well, becoming superhuman, which means brain, body, breath and being. So if you want to have more energy, more passion in your relationship or just want to be healthier and happier, then this is an event you don't want to miss. So grab your ticket now via the link in the description and 10% of all sales are going to the InStep charity who is helping women from domestic violence and sex trafficking. So if you want to learn how to age backwards, have more energy, have passion in your life again and just become superhuman, then this is something you don't want to miss. Grab your tickets now and become superhuman.